Leaders of the All Progressives Congress in the Southwest pledged to keep Nigeria united. The leaders also oppose secessionist calls in the region and other parts of the country. The fuel deregulation debate continues. State governors want a deregulation of petrol price. Organized labor oppose it. And some experts are advocating a total deregulation of the downstream sector of the oil industry. Stay tuned to find out what's best for you. Nigerians express disappointment and in some cases disgust at the absence of President Muhammadu Buhari and his deputy at the funeral of the late Chief of Army Staff and other officers who died on Friday. Welcome once again to a new week on The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. I am Aneta Felix. And I am Osaogi Ogbon. It was a pretty interesting weekend uh, across uh, the country. Interesting for some, sad for others. Yes. Uh, but of course, uh, the show must go on, as we always say. And so we'll say good morning and welcome. Thank you for joining us on a brand new week, a brand new Monday morning, as we wrap up the month of May. How are you? I'm, I'm good. How are you? I am hungry, hmm. as always. <laughs> so our top trending issue this morning is the absence of President Muhammadu Buhari and Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo at the burial of the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Ibrahim Atahiru. Atahiru and 10 other officers died in a plane crash on Friday and were laid to rest on Saturday. The absence of Nigeria's two top citizens has drawn criticism from many people, including some of the president's supporters. Now, an example is this tweet from Jeff Phillips One saying, if you want Buhari to attend events of national importance or visit sites of national tragedies, tell him there's a campaign for his re-election going on there and stay glued to your television. Wow. And so many other uh, co you know, chats, conversation from people talking about this particular issue. We saw you know, one from one of President Muhammadu Buhari's adding critics, Renal Mokri, saying that um, you know, it's, it's a propaganda. That because we know that the APC did respond to this, saying that there is a security uh, protocol that must be carried out. That no matter what the event is, especially a burial, that there needs to be a minimum of 48 hours, you know, time to prepare security detail for that event. And that, you know, this burial took place almost immediately and there was no, no time for the president to prepare his security detail. Seeing an event like a funeral as this one it would make him politically exposed to any attack or any risk. So Renault Mokri here saying this is a propaganda from the Buhari Media Center and that, uh, uh, the president did not attend uh, Ibrahim General uh, Ibrahim at a hero's funeral because the presidency needs 48 hours to prepare and that when his son was involved in an accident, it was there in less than you know, 30 minutes and all of that. So I listened to the radio on my, work, on my way to work this morning. I, I, I could feel the anger from lots of Nigerians. You know, people are not happy that the president didn't show up. You know, um, we also saw that the APC cited... Um, the case in the year 2010 on May 6, when uh, former President Goodlucky Billy Jonathan did not attend the funeral of uh, former President Yadua because it was sworn in that day. And, you know, the APC also quoted this 48-hour uh, protocol. But, you know, people have been saying you, the APC government came in on a platform of change. So if you're saying um, Jonathan did this, that's not an excuse for you to say we're going to do this. You guys should change yeah. and attend because this is the life of the chief of army staff. This is a foremost personality in the Nigerian military and someone who, who was championing the cause you know, of anti-terrorism. So you know, lots of backlash from the Nigerian you know, populace you know, for the president, for his vice, for failing to attend the burial ceremony you know, at the mosque and at the church um, on Saturday. Yeah, well, um, two governors were there. I think uh, the governor of Burnham State and one other governor were there. They didn't need 48 hours uh, preparation to be there. Um, you know, and um, I'm even, you know, sad that we even refer to the APC handle tweet. Um, you know, it's, it's disgusting, you know, to see the level of uh, the type of excuses that would always spring up. Mm -hmm. um, they would dig deep in the gutters for the, you know, any excuse that they can find. You know, the lowest borehole or, you know, sewage pit you can find, they can look for any excuse from there and bring it up and use that as an excuse, you know. but. 
I'm sure that it, whoever it is that typed out that response or that um, excuse knows what the truth is, mm. you know. And I feel like we should also move away from always referring to you know for, you know past examples and former you know um, presidents, um, because we all know what is right. We all know what the good thing to do is. Mm -hmm. We all know you know in our hearts, you know, in our deep inside our hearts, we know what the right thing is. Um, Everyone, you know, even before, you know, his death, you know, if, I'm sorry, um, after, you know, the death of the, you know, Chifami staff, there was already people who were saying that they would be completely shocked, you know, if the president does attend the burial. But they, you know, you know, their, you know, expectations came as, you know, as, 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 um, as they had stated. Um, and that is owing to what the last six years has been like um, with the current administration. Even with the latest uh, announcement of a, a public holiday for armed uh, forces, uh, members of the armed forces, mm -hmm. um, it still didn't come from the president's mouth. It came from, you know, a, a spokesperson saying the president has approved this and that. Um, when's the last time you saw your president speak on national issues? When's the last time the president addressed Nigerians on the most shocking and the most, you know, um, you know damning things that are happening in, in Nigeria? And I've said it over and over and over that not even death is big enough. We actually um, remember for, the last time because it was very um, short. Yeah. yeah, well, not even, death is not even big enough, you know, for the president to speak to Nigerians about. So what exactly would be that thing that will be able to bring um, Mr. President out of um, the Asurok Villa to speak to Nigerians? People will even clowned and said, oh, if the, if the bearer was taking place in the UK, he would have been there. Um, you know, if, you know, that bearer was going to be taking place in the UK, they would find, you know, reasons to throw all that jet and take him to the UK and he would be there. But because it is a, you know, 13 minute or 15 minute drive from Aso Villa to the cemetery, he suddenly couldn't make it, including the vice president. Um, and sadly also, on that same day when the bearer was happening, Malami's son was getting married and governors were all at that, you know, at that wedding, enjoying themselves, drinking and laughing. Well, I don't know about drinking, but, you know, having a good time while the chief of army staff, you know, was getting buried. Um, so there's, there's no excuse, you know, that would make sense whatsoever. You know, no matter what CHP you bring, what that excuse from, it wouldn't make sense in any way. And it really is sad because of what this tells to members of the Nigerian Armed Forces and security agencies, that when you die fighting for your country, your president wouldn't show up at your burial. Um, the president and his team would find an excuse why they shouldn't be there at your burial. They don't owe you that last respect. They don't feel you deserve that last respect. Even when you rise to the rank of a chief of army staff, even if you're a general, even if you're a lieutenant, whatever it is, the president has told you that he doesn't owe you that last respect. The best that he can do is wait till sometime around 11 p.m. and, you know, announce that, you know, flags are going to be flown at half mast and also, you know, declare, to, you know, a, a public holiday for members of the armed forces, which we're going to get into next, you know, to see what, you know, sense that really makes um, in, a, in a country that is currently at war with insurgents and bandits and, and the likes. So, um... There's, there's not much, you know, and this is not the way that I wish that I would start my um, Monday morning, you know, uh, to, you know, explain to Nigerian citizens what they already know and to the Nigerian people what is already glaring that your president doesn't think that he owes the chief of army staff who died in a very, very sad and shocking way, doesn't owe him that last respect of showing up at his burial. Not even the first lady was there to console the wife of the chief of army staff or the wives of all the um, army officers and generals who died in that plane crash. The president's wife was not even there. Hmm. I think it was yesterday that she showed up mm -hmm. um, and visited the, you know, the wife of um, uh, late Ibrahim Atahiru. Um, and then, of course, you know, a couple of hours later, they announced the, the um, 24 hour or the um, uh, public holiday. So it's, it's, it, there's really, I don't think there's any other way to, you know, to describe this or to paint mm -hmm. this, but it is, um, I, I wouldn't, you know, let me, let me read what Adamu Gaba says. Adamu Gaba normally is, you know, is a, is a you know, so strong supporter of, you know, the current administration. But this is what he tweeted. Mm -hmm. It says, in a war situation, we lost four generals, majors and, and lieutenants. Yet neither the president nor his vice, senate president, nor deputy speaker, nor his deputy deemed it feet to grace the burial. Even the wife of the chief of army staff was never accompanied by the first lady or second lady. Only two governors, Zulu Mambuni, with few ministers, um, uh, might have attended while Governor Wiki was having a political party. Other governors were attending a wedding in Kano. 
Um, he also goes on to say, yet most of these leaders may say they have a very important reason why they didn't attend. Coincidentally, all of them and uh, none of them will sacrifice 30 minutes for the life of soldiers who died trying to protect us, the highest level officers of our land. How uh, can that be? He ends by saying for them, Twitter is enough condolences, but they can go on campaigning over the country during um, elections. Mm -hmm. I saw someone tweet, um, uh, what if Twitter was never invented? Yeah. How would the president communicate to us? Maybe NTA. Gone are the days when we, when we used to see national live addresses. Mm. Now it's just 140 <laughs> characters on Twitter and, and that's it. And I'm, okay. Go ahead, please. I mean, when, when, you, when you compare this to what happened to other parts of the country, I remember in, in June, June 2020, um, Joe Biden, you know, attended Judge Floyd's funeral. This is not, this is... This is not a politician. This is not an army chief. This is, this is just an ordinary, ordinary American. An ordinary American. He flew all the way to Houston, traveled, met the family days before the burial to honor them because of what a police person or police officer did to them. Would the para if the president cannot attend the funeral of a chief of army staff, do you think they would ever attend the funeral of an ordinary Nigerian? Like, 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 I mean, not president, not vice, not, you know, Senate president, not, you know, House speaker, nobody. Um, and, you know, this brings me to, you know, one thing that I've always spoken about, you know, on this platform. And that is what, once again, for the one billionth time, what is the value of the Nigerian life, really? Um, regardless of how high ranking you are, what is the true value of the Nigerian life? And we'll look at the attitude with which the Nigerian government treats death and treats the value of the Nigerian life. That's, ex that's exactly what it tells you. That's the picture it paints, that the value of the Nigerian life, it really doesn't mean mm. so much to the Nigerian government. Um, if they didn't think it was important enough that Mr. President leaves Aso Rock or leaves Aso Villa um, um, to attend the burial mm. of his own chief of army staff that he um, you know, brought into power just in, in, in January here. He didn't think okay. it was important so, enough, so neither did the vice president. Really talking about this, you know, just prompts us to our next top trending. You know, we know that in response to this, the, the, you know, the presidency has said there's going to be a day off, you know, for all, you know, army, uh, army officers and, uh, you know, making a call to the uh, chief of army staff's wife, you know, as well, and saying that, you know, flags will be raised or reduced to half it's mass, half you mass, know, yeah. so that this is basically what you get. So this is the press statement we've seen signed yesterday, May 23rd, by Boss Mustafa, Secretary to Government of the Federation. It, it reads that His Excellency Mohammed Buhari, uh, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, has authorized that the national flag should be flown at half mast in all public buildings, facilities, in all official residences, with effects from Monday 24th to Wednesday 26th, May 2021. He says this is to honor the memory and services of the late chief of, uh, of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Ibrahim Atuhiru, and 10 senior military and service members who lost their lives in the plane crash on Friday, May 21st. Also, we know that um, they have given a, a, a day off, like I mentioned. Bashir Ahmed, President Muhammad Buhari's uh, um, aide, uh, you know, announced this on Twitter, saying uh, Buhari has approved a work-free day for members of the armed forces on Monday, May 24th, you know, just to honor him. So people, you know, the, the reaction we've been seeing here is that um, when somebody of such a caliber passes on in Nigeria, the message or the motivation to others is a day off rather than, I mean, rather than, you, your presence, rather than actual empathy, rather mm. than showing genuine, you know, concern. How does a day off really do anything for yeah, Well, you know, the that's the most that it can do. You know, and once again, you know, I've said it um, earlier that um, it would also, you know, you can also see that, you know, the president himself um, very likely didn't even make these statements. Um, these are from Twitter handlers, these are from the presidency as an institution, you know, deciding what to do, but not President Mohamed Abouar himself, who, you know, in Sena Climes would be on NTA, you know, which is our national television, speaking to the country and sending his own condolence messages. And that is after attending the burial, after speaking with the family of the late generals and, and the army officers, um, he will be, you know, speaking with the country, but you can't, you, you don't even see him, you know, anywhere um, doing all these things or making these statements by himself. 
um, taking a day off, you know, so what happens to security, you know, for that day? Exactly. Um, what happens to the fight against, you know, are we also, you know, going to expect that the bandits would also realize, okay, well, today's day of no let's, more fighting, let's, let's also <laughs> rest today, we'll continue tomorrow. Um, it, that, of course, is not going to happen. And so what happens to security? Do we, do we expect that maybe the police will step in here, the NSCDC will step in here? What exactly is the plan? Um, for soldiers fighting in the war in, in, in you know, northern Nigeria and other parts of the country? Are they meant to just relax on this day and not go to work? Are they meant to not you know, attend to um, um, tactical um, um, information that is sent to them? Mm -hmm. Are they meant to hear that there's going to be um, an attack in a certain village and decide, oh, today's our day off, you guys are on your own? In what way does this help you know, um, our situation? In what way does this in any way respect and, um, Atahir, you know, Atahir. and if we're talking about, you know, reducing the, or lowering the, ma the, the flag to half-mast, what really is the value of the Nigerian flag? And I ask this because when you refer back to the NSAS protest and how people were reportedly being shot at while holding the Nigerian flag, so what really is the significance? Do we have, do we have a, a sense of significance as to what the Nigerian flag represents? So oh. lowering the Nigerian flag, like, do we have an idea of what, you know, what the import is? Well, you know, do you, you understand where I'm, yeah, I'm coming from? For the average, I, average I Nigerian, yeah. what, what exactly does the Nigerian flag represent? If I could hold that flag that represents peace and unity and I can still get shot at? Well, you know, the Nigerian flag is not bulletproof. You know, so holding the flag, you know, and expecting to not be shot, you know, I think that was just, you know, someone just decided to, you know, tweet that at that time, you know, and people actually bought into it. Um, no, we're still, not talking about being, um, we're talking about the fact that the Nigerian army should understand what the, what's the, what the significance of the Nigerian flag is. Yes. An, an enemy would not be holding the flag of, of an enemy. Absolutely. Do you understand of course, what I'm, I'm sure trying to say? Of they, course, they, that's they, what I'm they, trying to they, say. They, they, so the incident of October 20th, uh, you know, um, I don't want, let's not get into that. Um, that incident, of course, I hope that, you know, there's somehow, somewhere justice someday. Um, but it's, it's, it's normal protocol, you know, that on a day of national mourning that the flags will be flown at half-mast, you know. Um, the relevance, the significance, the emotions that are attached to the Nigerian flag may not be as strong as they were in the 60s or in the 70s um, or even prior to that. You know, in the year 2021, I don't think anybody um, or a lot of Nigerians don't have that much, you know, uh, as much as it used to be. Um, for all the moments, you know, for example, you know, um, um, Kelechi Anacho, you know, held the flag, you know, at the day the Leicester, uh, I'm not sure what game that was, you know, but so the, there's people who still love that. Um, it's normal protocol. Um, that, that that is done, you know, and I wouldn't take that away from, you know, all of this. It's fine that they fly the flags at half-mast, you know, but the body language of the presidency, the body language of President Muhammad Bari himself is, is what we are lacking here. Um, um, anybody, you know, can, you know, lower a flag at half-mast in their home, but the president himself um, being able to step up at times like this to encourage those who are still fighting, any soldier right now, you know, um, who has seen the events of the, this weekend doesn't in any way have any reason to put his life on the line for Nigeria anymore. Because if he dies, it obviously has shown that Nigeria may not respect yeah, or care about you. You get a half mass standing, you know, he, a day off for his yeah, colleagues. Yeah, obviously. So, so, and that is what is, has, has been lacking for the last couple of years and still hasn't changed. But they still will look into the deepest gutters and sewage pits to bring out one excuse and give, you know, as the reason. So if 48 hours, you know, was not, you know, available to plan for, does that mean that President Mahmoud Buhari himself cannot move around Abuja, the federal capital, without freely, safe. without, you know, military or, you know, security surveillance first? We'll take a short break. When we come back off the press, we get to go through the major stories making headlines across Nigeria today. Stay with us.